Ever since Super Saiyan God was unveiled in the Dragon Ball Z movie, Battle of Gods, it has always been compared to Super Saiyan 4 from Dragon Ball GT. And this would only ramp up when the anime returned to make Dragon Ball Super and adapted the movies into the anime, especially when Super Saiyan God returned and performed a multiversal feat. For years now, it seems that the large majority of the community has accepted that not only is Dragon Ball Super stronger than Dragon Ball GT and Super Saiyan 4, but that even just God Goku from the first arc of Super eclipses the original sequel series and absorbs that power into his base form. But just because something is accepted in a community doesn't really mean anything, as much of the community hasn't even seen GT anyways because of its negative reputation by people who only watch the terrible dub. But I actually believe that Super Saiyan 4 vs Super Saiyan God is a lot more nuanced than you might think after you pay attention to not only the scaling in GT, but how power scaling about Dragon Ball has changed over the last five to six years. So I wanted to make this video for hopefully the last time and give you my honest truth. Now I believe that it is best to first start the video by setting up the old argument for why Super Saiyan God Goku had to be stronger than GT and Super Saiyan 4. It's actually pretty simple and straightforward. The first major argument is that Super Saiyan God Goku is multiversal because his clashes with Beerus threaten to destroy the entire macrocosm, which is made up of multiple universes. And this is true. Battle of Gods Goku is multiversal, whereas no such feat happens in Dragon Ball GT. In fact, it's only stated that Omega Shenron would destroy the universe over time, and besides that, it is stated in a guide that he can destroy a galaxy. Since Omega Shenron is far stronger than Super Saiyan 4 Goku, and he is only universal over time and galaxy level regularly, then that makes it pretty clear that Super Saiyan God would be far stronger than Super Saiyan 4. The other main point is using a data book where it states that Vegito from Dragon Ball Z is stronger than Super Saiyan 4 Goku from Dragon Ball GT. We know that in Battle of Gods, Goku doesn't even think fusion would work on Beerus, and that should encompass Super Saiyan 3 Vegito. But when he goes full Super Saiyan God, Goku is actually confident that he can take on Beerus. That should mean that false Super Saiyan God Goku is above Super Saiyan 3 Vegito, Super Saiyan God is far stronger than the false Super Saiyan God, and then he actually gets stronger over the course of the fight too. If Base or Super Vegito are stronger than Super Saiyan 4, then narratively, God would be far stronger as well. Now this argument worked for years, but that doesn't really make it a good argument, especially not anymore. The first reason as to why this argument hasn't aged well is because the Boo Saga was actually a lot stronger than we thought all along. This inherently means that GT is naturally stronger than we thought as well, because GT is the sequel to the Z anime. Back in the olden days, people used to argue that Dragon Ball Z top tiers like Super Saiyan 3 Goku, the Boos, Vegito, etc. were all multi-solar system level. But even back then, people would argue that there was a lot of evidence that they could be multi-galactic. Which is funny to think about. Kid Buu might be multi-galactic, and Super Saiyan 3 Goku was relative to him, but Sen Shenron, who can mollywop Super Saiyan 4 Goku, is somehow only galaxy level. Yeah, that checks out, I guess. But over the years, we would unearth the information about how strong the Dragon Ball Z Buu Saga characters were. There are a myriad of statements of multiple characters being universal in power. That's across anime statements, manga statements, and data book statements, with many of them coming from different forms of Buu, mainly Kid Buu and Buu Han. It is stated that Kid Buu would make the universe go poof, poof would likely mean destroying it nigh instantaneously. His fight with Goku was shaking and destroying the Kaioshin realm, which is its own universal space-time continuum within the Dragon Ball macrocosm. Buhan was even going to destroy the macrocosm with his vice shout while he was fighting Super Vegito. For years, we would argue that this attack was hacks and not attack potency, but it is AP. The vice shout is simply an enraged key attack. The focus key is so strong that it causes space-time to break down and can destroy the entire macrocosm. We know it's attack potency based because Gotenks could not do it as a Super Saiyan, but he could when he went Super Saiyan 3. Buhan is just doing it on a much higher scale, and even Vegito's reaction to this enraged Buhan certainly signifies that it is attack potency or raw power, not hacks. As he mentions being impressed with enraged Buhan's power specifically, and it is Vegito's raw power that actually cancels out the ability as well. This actually leads to a lot of very interesting scaling implications because, at least in the Z anime, Kid Buu is the strongest Buu, which would put him above enraged Buhan, thus making Kid Buu, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and actually a lot of other characters 
multiversal as well. What's actually crazy is that this could go back much further as there are statements of Perfect Cell having infinite power and a few statements of him being able to destroy the universe as well. I understand if you don't like the idea of Cell being universal or multiversal, but at the very least, you have to recognize that Boo Saga characters are. Hell, it even took the combined energy of the multiverse to defeat him with the Spirit Bomb. Well, let's look at the first argument for Super Saiyan God being stronger than Super Saiyan 4. Super Saiyan God threatened the multiverse. Super Saiyan 4 is only galaxy level. Well, with the retroactive scaling, that actually makes Boo Saga characters multiversal. And again, GT is the sequel to Z, and it takes place starting 15 years after the end of the Boo Saga, where Boo Saga characters are heavily eclipsed. What this means is that we now have Super Saiyan 4 Goku also scaling to multiversal. But let's not act like there wasn't a lot of evidence for this all along. A lot of the scaling in GT just went overlooked over the years. For example, Lord Lude is data to be able to destroy the universe. Hellfighter 17 and 17 were strong enough to merge two universes together as they fused hell with the living world. This was confirmed they were merged together by Shenron, and merging two universes is multiversal. Furthermore, official sources state that Black Smoke Shenron is said they can destroy the universe. Omega Shenron was going to destroy the universe passively very quickly as his minus energy was going to spread so fast that Supreme Kai wanted to leave the Kaioshin realm and run away. Now for clarification, when universe is mentioned in Dragon Ball, the majority of the time it's referring to the whole macrocosm which contains the living world, heaven, hell, the Kaioshin realm, the demon realm, etc. Even though these are all universes contained within. So if Black Smoke Shinron can destroy the universe, that makes him multiversal. And Omega Shinron is the strongest of these shadow dragons. And yet, once Goku transcends in GT, he's actually so strong that he tanks a series of key blasts from Omega Shinron in base. So yeah, Goku in his base form, just tanking attacks that are well above baseline multiversal. GT was downplayed for years, guys. So now the whole main argument for Super Saiyan God Goku being stronger than Super Saiyan 4 is actually incorrect because they are both multiversal, and actually if you backscale, you can get Super Saiyan 4 far higher, which we will get into eventually. But this leads into the second column and the argument that the data book says that Z Vegito is stronger than Super Saiyan 4 Goku from GT. If this is true, then it doesn't matter that Super Saiyan 4 Goku is multiversal, he would be at a lower level of multiversal than Super Vegito, and thus weaker than Super Saiyan God, who dwarfs Vegito. But what if I told you that the guide isn't actually saying that Z Vegito is stronger than GT from Super Saiyan 4, and instead, the wording is a lot more vague, and that is could be a mistranslation as well, and the real statement puts the whole scaling into question. Also, what if I told you that the entire narrative, feats, and scaling of GT completely debunks Vegito from Z being stronger than a Super Saiyan 4? Because that's actually the case. Let's start by going over what the data bug page actually says. Merging with Vegeta. After Goku and Vegeta use a merging item to merge, they become Vegito. They can furthermore become a Super Saiyan, becoming Super Vegito. After the two strongest people merge, they become the greatest master in the universe, perhaps even stronger than Super Saiyan 4. Now this seems pretty blatant at first read, but it is contradictory to what actually happens in Dragon Ball GT. The most blatant contradiction happens in the Baby Saga when Goku faces off against the villain Baby, who has taken over Vegeta's body and reached a whole new echelon of power once he goes Super Saiyan 2. This form is called Super Baby. In this form, Baby talks about his power and says that he has now attained the greatest of Saiyan power. And don't forget that Baby has all of the memories of the people he takes over, meaning he would know of Vegito and remember how strong Vegeta thought Vegito was. Even Goku agrees with this and says that this is the strongest key he has ever felt, and obviously, he would have felt his own key when he was Vegito. There is a very common retort to this argument that is that Vegito never actually used his full power back in the Buu saga. Thus, Goku and Baby are only comparing this power to a suppressed Vegito, who we wouldn't actually know how strong he is. There are numerous guidebook statements and episode summaries that imply that Vegito was holding back against Buhan. But this refutation is incredibly hypocritical. Why is that? Well, because it's one of the main roots of the argument for God being above 4 in the first place. That Goku didn't think that Fusion could take on Beerus, but then thinks Fall Super Saiyan God has a chance. The issue is that by the merits of the very same argument, Goku in Battle of Gods never actually felt Vegito's full power since he held back in the Buu Saga. So if we go by the same logic as the refutation, Super Saiyan God cannot be stated to be stronger than Vegito, only the suppressed Vegito we saw. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot use this statement to make God Goku powerful, but then limit it for Super Saiyan 4 and Baby. So then all we know is that Super Saiyan 4 and Super Saiyan God scale above Buhan. But we can actually throw away much of the statements of Vegito never showing his full power. While you can certainly argue this at first, Buhan does eventually push him to his full power. And if you go by the full context of the anime, it actually shows that it's a lot closer than you might think between Vegito and Buhan. When Elder Kai first sees base Vegito, he's actually not confident that he can defeat Buhan. And then during Buhan's first rage boost, he would actually force Vegito to struggle against one of his key attacks. And now there 
are data book statements that state that Vegito is stronger than Buhan in base, but again, it's not enraged Buhan yet, and in the same guidebook statement, it actually states that Vegito needs to go Super Saiyan in order to utterly pound on Buu, meaning that he couldn't do that to Buhan's first rage boost as just base Vegito, which affirms that Buhan has at least some relativity to base Vegito, otherwise he wouldn't need Super Saiyan to do this to him. When Vegito goes Super Vegito, he would have a massive upper hand on Buhan, and then he could actually hold back. But once Buhan went in rage and threatened to destroy the entire macrocosm, Super Vegito would actually be pushed back by Buhan's aura, and then he would actually struggle and have to raise his power level in order to negate the attack and save the universe. Vegito would even say that he was impressed with Buhan and wanted him to fight with that strength, but Buhan at that point would have lost the rage boost and would return to getting thrashed. But you can't really deny that enraged Buhan was close in power to a Super Vegito that was forced to go all out, meaning that both Baby and Goku would know of Super Vegito's full power. Furthermore, Baby being stronger than Vegito is implied in the GT Perfect Files, where it is stated that Super Saiyan 4 was made to be strong enough to fight Baby, who at that time was the strongest Saiyan or Sephorian ever. Vegito is a Saiyan, meaning that at the very least, Super Baby is above Super Vegito. Now, if you want to argue that, well, that's only Super Vegito, if you went Super Saiyan 3, that would make him 8 times stronger, and thus above Baby and Super Saiyan 4, but it actually wouldn't. Super Baby 2 is implied to be his own Super Saiyan 3, that would make Super Baby 2 at least half the power, of a hypothetical Super Saiyan 3 Vegito. Well, once Goku goes Super Saiyan 4, he's able to mollywop Super Baby 2 while only using a smidgen of his power and even tanks Baby's Revenge Death Ball that is stated to be an evil version of the Spirit Bomb. This likely means that this version of Super Saiyan 4 Goku would ragdoll even a hypothetical Super Saiyan 3 Vegito. And then he gets full power Super Saiyan 4 after that, which is stronger than a 10 times increase because it does better than a times 10 Kamehameha from regular Super Saiyan 4 Goku. But you can actually argue that Vegito was eclipsed far before the Baby Saga, as General Reldo is stated to be stronger than Majin Buu. A lot of people like to downplay this to say that it only means Fat Buu, but that would make zero sense. Goku stated that nobody had a chance to defeat Ub at the end of the Z tournament, except for him and Vegeta. Mind you that Fat Buu was competing here. Goku then got far stronger training with Ub for five years, and contrary to popular belief, when Goku got turned back into a kid in GT, he didn't lose any power. He just had less stamina, and it made it harder for him to use the higher forms of his Super Saiyans, and he lost some of his abilities. Because of the power growth, it would make no sense to assume it's Fat Buu. Furthermore, whenever character strength is brought up, we usually assume their max power that they can bring out. This would be like stating that whenever Frieza's power is brought up to only assume his first form. Sure, Frieza's true form is his final form, but so is Kid Buu. Kid Buu is the natural form of Buu. When Goku or Vegeta's power is brought up, it typically isn't referring to their base power, but their strongest power. So, Rildo is stronger than Kid Buu, and Goku in his base form actually dwarfs his power. Now, a lot of people say that Kid Buu never showed his full power, so it's not really that impressive to say Roldo is above Buu, but this is wrong for many reasons, as even if we assume that Kid Buu never went full power, the power he showed is a whole other Liga power above Buhan, who showed high relativity to Super Vegito. This can actually imply that Kid Buu even holding back is above Super Vegito. And I know there are statements that say Vegito is the strongest in the universe, but there are also statements for Kid Buu and Super Saiyan 3 Goku for this as well. And when you pair it with the data book statements and the statements in the anime, as crazy as it sounds, Super Saiyan 3 Goku likely reached the power of Super Vegito on his own. But sure, Kid Buu was holding back at times while fighting Super Saiyan 3 Goku, but Goku still felt his full power when he used the Spirit Bomb on him. There's really no reason to assume that Kid Buu did not go all out and just let the Spirit Bomb kill him at a suppressed power. If Enraged Buhan was close in power to Super Vegito, that puts Rildo at least just as strong as Super Vegito, but likely much stronger. And Goku is bullying him in his base form. Goku's base only gets far stronger from here on out. So yeah, base GT Goku dwarfs Vegito. Now I would say it is not the best to just throw away a guide or any quality source, but if something is contradictory to the main source material, then we can throw it out, or we can find a context where they work together. If we find a new context, we can say that this is actually just referring to a power multiplier, that the power growth of fusing into Vegito might be as strong as going Super Saiyan 4. But there are other translations of this guide that make it far less convincing. Here it says, can't say for sure if it's stronger than Super Saiyan 4. This makes it a lot more of a question rather than a claim, and thus I actually find this statement as pretty useless. A lot of people use the statements from this guide of Vegito being the greatest master in the universe, meaning that Vegito is stronger than Super Saiyan 4, but this is a contradictory statement. The same statement calls Goku and Vegeta the two strongest, which is contradicted because they were not the strongest when they fused. Buu was stronger than them. Furthermore, the other 
guides state that Super Saiyan 4 was the strongest in the universe, so by their own logic, that proves Super Saiyan 4 Goku is stronger than Vegito because he's also the strongest. There is not a lot going on with this statement that realistically puts Vegito up to snuff with GT power levels. But now that I've thoroughly debunked the idea that Vegito is stronger than Super Saiyan 4, back to the topic at hand, Super Saiyan 4 Goku versus Super Saiyan God. I've already debunked that Super Saiyan 4 is not multiversal, as both GT and Super Goku scale above multiversal back in their respective Buu sagas. Thus, we will need to resort to inverse scaling to see who is stronger. Something that will help with this is a data book called the Chozenshu. This data book does imply that Super Saiyan 4 is more powerful than Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan 4 and Super Saiyan God are on the same page set right next to each other, and while it says that both God and Super Saiyan 4 are above Super Saiyan 3, it states that Super Saiyan 4 is the ultimate form of Super Saiyan. This type of wording is not granted to Super Saiyan God, thus implying that Super Saiyan 4 is a stronger form than Super Saiyan God. But this would not answer the question completely. Can Super Saiyan 4 Goku beat God Goku from the Battle of the Gods? Because even if Super Saiyan 4 is a stronger form than God, we need to show also that GT Goku's base is above Super Goku's. And this is one that is a lot harder to discuss. As the Battle of Gods takes place four years after Goku's defeat of Kid Buu, the issue is that we don't really have an idea of how much stronger Goku's base form got over that four year span. We know he was doing some training, so he should have gotten stronger over that time, but nothing in the narrative actually implies that Goku got a lot stronger over the four year time skip. At best, we could say that Goku is stronger than Kid Buu as a Super Saiyan 3 now, as he knows that Beerus is stronger than Buu, but he still wants to fight him. When it comes to GT Goku, we know that the power growth he had was incredible, as even just at the end of Z, he's able to fight Ub in his base, and Ub was implied to be Kid Buu level. He then spent five years training with Ub, then his power progression throughout GT goes absolutely bonkers. As Goku would face off against Lord Lude, and his Super Saiyan form was weaker than Lord Lude. Then the Sigma Force are involved, and Goku says he hasn't fought someone as strong as them in a long time. Dr. Mew was confident that the Sigma Force could stop Goku, even though they saw him fight as a Super Saiyan against Lude, and Gerus gave the data on Goku's power to the Sigma Force, and they believed they could beat him. But Goku would whoop them in his base form, even defeating them when they fused together, implying that Goku's base form on planet M2 surpassed his Super Saiyan form, when he faced Lude. Goku would need Super Saiyan 2 to fight Roldo's Metaform, but then we would be introduced to Baby later on. Baby's base power is the sum of Roldo and Lude's and more power on top of that. He then gets stronger over time as he takes on more hosts. And just a few episodes later, base Goku would send Baby flying away with the Key Blast, showing that he does scale the Baby in his base, Baby, who scales above Meta Roldo, showing that this Goku has surpassed his Super Saiyan 2 form with just his base power. Then we'd get into the baby saga where he can stack Super Saiyan 3 and later Super Saiyan 4 on top of it. With only a smidgen of Super Saiyan 4, Goku's power dwarfs his Super Saiyan 3 power, and then full powered Super Saiyan 4 is over 10 times stronger than regular Super Saiyan 4. Leading into the Super 17 saga, there are numerous statements that Super 17 is the strongest machine mutant, and Baby was a machine mutant, so Super 17 should be stronger than Gold Nozaru, Baby Vegeta. But when Goku fought Super 17, he only needed to use Super Saiyan 1 at first, which would imply that Goku surpassed his Super Saiyan 4 power with just Super Saiyan 1. In the Shadow Dragon Saga, Raid Shinron, the 5-star dragon, would be able to take on a x10 Kamehameha from Super Saiyan 4 Goku. But later on, Goku would face the 4-star dragon, Nova Shinron, whom he said he was the strongest dragon that he had faced up to that point. Goku would fight him in his base form, which shows that in the time it took between Goku fighting Raid Shinron and then Nova Shinron, Goku's base form surpassed his x10 Kamehameha in Super Saiyan 4. Goku could then go Super Super Saiyan 4 on top of his new base power, then he can go ultra full power Super Saiyan 4, which is over 10 times stronger than full power Super Saiyan 4, which is over 10 times stronger than regular Super Saiyan 4, in which Omega Shenron, the fusion of all Shadow Dragons, actually scales above. But then Goku would meet his transcendence to Godhood and would become strong enough to actually tank attacks from Omega Shenron in his base form. I think we can say that there is no evidence that base Goku in Battle of the Gods is stronger than base Goku in GT, as at best he is above Kid Buu with Super Saiyan 3. Whereas I've shown a massive chain skill across GT for Goku, whose starting base was already far above Kid Buu's. If GT Goku has a stronger base than Battle of Gods Goku, and the data book states that Super Saiyan 4 is stronger than Super Saiyan God, that means that GT Goku has both a stronger base form and a stronger transformation on top of it. So when it comes to power, it's not even close. Super Saiyan 4 Goku from GT would have his way with Super Saiyan God Goku in Battle of Gods. Now the next aspect of this debate would be speed. Note that in Dragon Ball, power and speed are pretty heavily linked, since Super Saiyan 4 Goku is stronger than God, 
he'd likely have greater speed inherently as well. But I still want to show why Super Saiyan 4 Goku is faster, even if you throw that logic out. Super Saiyan God does have an amazing speed feat of covering the entire macrocosm in a short time frame, which has been calculated to be over 100 sextillion times the speed of light. In the filler of the Z anime that is canon to the GT anime, Goku in his base form travels the length of the afterlife, which has been calculated to be 4.38 quadrillion times the speed of light. It is a much slower feat than Battle of Gods Goku, nearly a 27 million times difference. But all we need to show is that Goku increased his power by that much between the middle of the seven year time skip and GT, which is fairly easy to show. Goku performed this feat in his base. He would then have his mastered Super Saiyan form on top of that, which he would surpass in the middle of this time skip as PyCon was stronger than Super Perfect Cell in his base. And then Goku's base would later batch that PyCon. And then in the Buu Saga, he would have Super Saiyan 3 on top of that. Also, later on in the Buu Saga, Goku with only 1% of his power was strong enough to fight Ultimate Gohan inside of Buuhan's body. Ultimate Gohan was stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku at the beginning of the Buu Saga. It is then stated that he has his full power inside of Buhan, but now Goku in his base is around his power with less than 1% of his own. So if we take that 27 million times speed gap and divide it by 50 times for when Goku surpassed his mastered Super Saiyan in base, divide it by 400 for Super Saiyan 3 stacked on top of that, divide it by 100 from fighting Ultimate Gohan at less than 1% of his power, that puts base Goku at the end of the Buu Saga at 7.4% as fast as the God Goku feat, which means that Super Saiyan Goku in the Buu Saga of the Z anime is faster than Battle of God's Goku. Keep in mind that Dragon Ball Super Super is canon to Dragon Ball Z Kai, whereas GT is canon to the original Dragon Ball Z, with the original Dragon Ball Z anime being much more powerful than Kai because of all the filler. So GT Goku actually has the massive speed advantage here as well, as this speed feat isn't actually in Kai, and thus Battle of Gods Goku does not scale to it. I'm aware of God Goku having infinite speed feats for threatening the macrocosm, which has many statements of being infinite in size, or inaccessible speed feats for moving faster than instant transmission. Kid Buu did this in the anime. But keep in mind that Super Saiyan 4 would inherently have these speed tiers as well if you want to argue it. As I already showed, he crossed the afterlife in finite time. The afterlife would be infinite in these same arguments, meaning that Goku in his base form has infinite speed earlier in the series than Battle of Gods Goku. And the cooler movie is canon to GT, as cooler appears in GT, and the showrunner of GT said that all the moves are canon to the Z anime. In the second cooler movie, cooler can move so fast that he can fight Goku mid-instant transmission, which would mean traveling in zero time, which is inaccessible speed. And that would be GT Goku having inaccessible speed way sooner than Dragon Ball Super Goku. So no matter which way you slice it, Super Saiyan 4 is far faster as well. And let's not throw out that God Goku wins because he has God Key. God Key is one of the most overrated things about Super. In fact, we've seen on numerous occasions God Key users lose or severely struggle against characters who themselves don't have God Key. It's not going to make much of a difference here. The old argument for God Goku being stronger than Super Saiyan 4 Goku is not very good, and it really can't be used anymore. As of right now, Super Saiyan 4 Goku would defeat Battle of Gods Goku. It's not even close. But I know that a lot of people are going to disagree with me, so comment your thoughts down below. Let me know if you thought I got anything wrong. With that being said, hope you guys did enjoy my return to Dragon Ball. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Join the channel as a member if you want access to all my videos early and to get more videos every single week. And I hope you guys all have an amazing day. Peace out.